Greetings. This is Doc Ock coming to you live and direct from Black Facts Headquarters Central. Tonight, we are bringing you just another taste of um, the stories that have gone into enriching the lives of many African people around the world when they have learned about some of the people that we have been talking about it has been life changing to say the least because there are so many stories that never made it onto the Hollywood screen never made it onto the silver screen never made it onto your TV set and may not even have made it inside the your computer as delivered over the internet. But those stories are just as important, if not even more important, than some of the ones that we do see on TV, which to some extent seem to be the same old tried and true cop stories. Bad guy robs bank, cop five chases after the robber, puts him in jail, okay? Old story. Where are the other stories that make up, give us a fuller picture of life on the planet Earth? Like the one we're about to tell tonight, which we'll get into in just a minute. But before we go there, let's go ahead and read our proverb of the day, which is, the way we're saying it today is chance favors the prepared hand. Some say chance favors the bold, but we're going with chance favors the prepared hand. And somebody just gave me that one the other day. I can't remember exactly where it came from. It's, I'm, I'm going to say it's an American proverb for now, but I liked it. Chance favors the prepared hand. One of my professors, uh, Tim Moore, he used to always like to say, uh, use the 5P principle, which I never forgot, okay? There's some things teachers teach you that you never forget, and it always come return to the forefront of your mind when necessary, like the 5P principle. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. That's always the case, okay? So the uh, poem for tonight is called A Day of Small Things, and it comes out of this book here, We Rise we resist, we raise our voices. We rise, we resist, and we raise our voices. And this is a book by um, Wayne Hudson and Cheryl Willis Hudson, a husband and wife team. But they, the, the poems in the book are not necessarily theirs. They're the poems of many people, many people. So it's many voices. And I'm going to put on my glasses as I have been wont to do lately, to make sure that I can read all these little bitty tiny words on this very colorful page. I'll show you the page here so you can just get an idea. Very colorfully illustrated book. I think this one is illustrated by who illustrated the book. I don't see their name here on the book, but it's very, very colorfully illustrated. A Day of Small Things. Have a day of small things. Compliment someone on an outfit or a hairdo. Congratulate a friend on a victory. Give a stranger with a gift a stranger. Gift a stranger with a smile. Telephone, don't text. An older, an elder in the family. Telephone, don't text. An elder in the family. Give a few dollars to a worthy cause. Spend 15 minutes cell phone off thinking about someone other than yourself. A soul who has suffered a loss, a heartbreak, someone in need of a flavor or cheering up or a surprise. Write a gentle poem. No one becomes a bully, a grouch, self-centered soul, vulgar, overnight, bit by bit, 
That's how it happens. A snicker here, a chuckle there, and a mean-spirited joke, a passing on of gossip to itching ears. So it is with growing into goodness bit by bit. If you make a habit of having just one day a week of small things, you may find that G, generosity, R, reciprocity, A, agape love, C, compassion, E, empathy, in other words, grace, become second nature, your way of life, who you truly, who you truly are inside, who you truly are inside, bit by bit, little by little. That's how it happens. Whether it be good or whether it be bad, it still all happens the very same way. So tonight and tomorrow night, because it's going to take more than one night and we still probably won't finish this book here, about Chevalier de Saint George. They misspelled his name. It should be an S on the end of George, but that's okay. They're spelling it the American way instead of the French way because the French always drop those consonants off at the end of their words. Very, I find that to be a very annoying habit, but that's how French is. And so let's see. You know what? Uh, I'm going to read. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, this is Eric Velasquez again. Oh, he's the one that did the one we just read about. Um, let's see. The man who made the library, if, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and read the inside little flap here on the inside of this hardback book because that will give us a, uh, a good idea of what the book is about. Joseph Bouillon was one of the most famous men in 18th century France, born to a slave mother and a wealthy French father on the island of Guadalupe. He was taken to Paris as a young boy. There, his ambitious father named him the Chevalier de Saint-Georges and made sure that he was educated as a young aristocrat. In Paris, the Chevalier excelled at every endeavor, becoming a champion swordsman, violin virtuoso, composer, and later a military commander in the French Revolution. From the plantations of the West Indies to the Palace of Versailles, the other Mozart captures the true story of a remarkable man who overcame every obstacle. Illustrated with both original and archival paintings and period artifacts, the book also features informative sidebars and timelines, which we are not going into today, probably. These highlight the lives of such figures as Marie Antoinette, Franz Joseph Haydn, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, and illuminate a fascinating panorama of history that spans both the French Revolution and the fight for Haitian independence. Today, the music of the Chevalier de Saint-Georges is being played once again, and his inspiring and life-affirming story lives on. Saint-Georges. Okay, Chevalier de Saint-Georges. And here you can see, this is one of those period pieces they were talking about. It is not an illustration from the book but is an illustration, a uh, painting, contemporaneous painting of Chevalier de Saint-Georges. Okay? Chevalier de Saint-Georges. In the beginning, they said, it's a boy, a fine, fine boy. The midwife held up the ball and baby and a smile across Nanon's Exhausted face. It was Christmas Day, 1745, on the French island of Guadalupe in the West Indies. Outside the plantation house, the sounds of holiday drumming and, a da and dancing came from the street of the slave cabins. He should be called a Yosef, the local priest decreed. That's the name for a boy born on Christmas Day. But the priest did not write the baby's name in the parish record book. 
Although Yosef's father was a wealthy planter from a prominent French family, his mother, Nanon, was a slave, and the children of slaves were not registered by the church. But George's de Bouillon Saint-Georges loved, loved the baby son that Nanon had given him. When Yosef grew older, his father would sometimes put him on his saddle when he rode out to inspect the work on the plantations. In the sugarcane fields, Yosef heard the songs of Africa. One worker would start the singing as he worked, and the others would join in, repeating the tunes over and over again. On Sundays and feast days, the Africans danced to their own music. The children danced as well, imitating the moves of the adults. Yosef would bring them little cakes his mother had made. Sometimes he too would sway to the rhythm of the drumming and singing. I'm going to make a little change over here. Don't get wigged out just because it looks like I'm a little bit off camera here, even though I am on the lamb, so to speak here. I just thought about it. I was Sometimes I forget to readjust my camera work when I'm reading a story like this one with all these vibrant pictures. I always try to get a third angle. That's right. It's my three camera technique. There we go. Much better. Okay. Yosef loved to tap his feet when Monsieur, excuse me, Monsieur Platon played his fiddle. Now, what's the difference between a fiddle and a violin? If you ask me, they look just the same. Here goes a man playing a fiddle. And here goes a man holding a violin. What's the difference? There is none. Fiddle and a violin, they're both the very same instrument. It's just a matter of, could be a matter of how you play it. Okay, I think it's more a matter of how you play it than the actual instrument itself. Because when you say you, I was just fiddling around, it's very, uh, it's a very um, casual thing. But when you say you've been, I've been playing the violin, that's much sounds much more formal. Best I could do with it. I haven't looked them up to see. I'll leave that to you. But meanwhile, Monsieur Platon helped Joseph's father manage the plantation, but he was also a good fiddler who had once played in the cafes of Paris, of Paris. When Yosef was old enough, Monsieur Platon gave him lessons on the violin. Georges de Bouillon Saint-Georges wanted his son to be educated like a gentleman. So Joseph learned to read and write in French. He also learned how to ride and shoot. And his father taught him some of the basics of fencing with a small dueling sword. But Yosef would soon say goodbye to Monsieur Platon and to the island of Guadalupe. When Yosef was eight, his father announced that he was selling his plantations to go and live in France. Nanon and Yosef would go with him. They would live in a fine house in Paris. And this picture here depicts the River Seine, okay, in Paris. During the time that Joseph Bouillon was living there. You see, it's a very wide river. And this is going to come into play here in just a little bit. It says here, the painting depicts the River Seine in Paris. Much as Joseph and Nanon would have seen it, the river was the heart of the city. Goods arrived daily on barges to be sold in markets along the banks. People also bathed, did laundry, watered their horses in the river. The towers of the medieval cathedral of Notre Dame can be seen off to the left. Okay, can't see much of them if you can see them. Um, the Notre Dame bridge at the center has houses built right across it. Ah, okay, so they're talking about this bridge. And this was something that was common also. You can't see it that well. I have to get really close, but it's right here in the crack in the very middle of the book. You see here, there's a bridge here going over the water. 
And then you can see there are homes, houses, and it, there will be businesses down at the bottom of these houses as they go across. So you'd have a business and then living quarters above the business. And this is how they made bridges back at that time, because I've also heard of bridges like that in London, England. Matter of fact, London Bridge, that famous bridge we always like to sing so much about. So Nanon boarded the sailing ship. The captain bowed and welcomed her on board. People had always remarked on how beautiful Nanon was. And in the stylish silk gown that Georges had bought for her, she looked lovelier than ever. Georges had also taken the necessary steps with the authorities to make sure that his son and Nanon were no longer slaves. In France, slavery had been outlawed, though it still existed in French colonies such as Guadalupe, where planters made fortunes from slave labor. When their ship arrived at the French port of Bordeaux, Joseph looked over the rail at the fine houses and warehouses that lined the bustling wharves. The slave trade and goods from the, comp the colonies harvested by slaves had helped to make Bordeaux a prosperous town. From Bordeaux, they traveled by horse-drawn coach to Paris, where Georges' brother had found a house for them on a fashionable square. As Joseph and Nanon explored their new city, people on the street often stared at them. There were not many African faces in Paris in 1753, and none as elegantly dressed as this regal black woman and her handsome young son. In Paris, status was everything. To be rich was important, but being an aristocrat, ah, that was the best of all. George knew his son would not find it easy to be accepted in snobbish French society. Before leaving the Caribbean, he created a title for him. His son's new name would be Joseph Bouillon, the Chevalier de Saint George. A chevalier in France was equal to a knight in England, where he would have been called Sir, G Sir Joseph or Sir Joseph. And since George had an important new job as an official of the king's court. He could stare down anyone who questioned his son's right to the title of Chevalier. George was also determined that Joseph would excel in all the pastimes of a young Chevalier. When he turned 13, Joseph was sent to board at one of France's finest fencing academies run by a master swordsman named La Bouzade in the or la, la Bousser. In the mornings, the boys learned mathematics, history, and languages, as well as music, art, and dance. Horsemanship was taught on the grounds of the nearby Tulier Palace. The afternoons were given over to fencing, a skill at which every young aristocrat had to excel. Within a few years, Joseph was the best fencer in the school. It helped that he was taller than most Frenchmen, but he was also very strong and agile. Swordsmen were eager to challenge him, and crowds came to see the Negro, quote unquote, as he was called, duel. Once Yosef heard a young aristocrat make snide remarks about having defense with a, quote unquote, half cast. The usually gentle Yosef picked him up and threw him across the room where he landed with a crash during another match a young noble who didn't want to compete against Yosef kept retreating and would never attack. Frustrated, Yosef lifted him up, turned him upside down, and carried him around the hall to the cheers of the spectators. <laughs> that must have been a real sight. Above and left, La Bousset's school, at La, at La Bousset's school, Joseph was taught proper fencing form as shown in these illustrations. From books of the period, he learned how to fence with a light, flexible sword known as a foil. The thin blade of the foil had a blunt tip as the goal was to hit or to shave one's opponent, not to cause injury. La Bousset, in fact, invented one of the first protective face masks in fencing. Swords were no longer used for combat in France, but fencing was a highly prized pastime for gentlemen. La Bousset's son became a lifelong friend of Yosef's and later wrote 
perhaps the most extraordinary man ever known in fencing was the famous St. George. So we'll have to end there. But when we return tomorrow, we'll read about the ladies. And what did the ladies think of this black man in Petty? Gay Petty, as they like to call it. And in the meanwhile... All you little children out there, you know what time it is. It's time to lay down that little head on your little bed. Close those yeah, yeah eyes and wait for that sun to rise. It's coming up in the new day. It's going to come up in the east just like a beast. And when it goes down, there's no need for you to frown. All you need to do is just lay your little head on down, close those eyes and get a good night's sleep. When you arise, you'll be able to greet the new day in a whole new way. And go ahead and start to play all those little games that you like to play after you've done your schoolwork, of course. Meanwhile, all you adults out there, you know what's going on. We still got our campaign going on, our fundraising campaign. We're looking for 20,000 by 2020, excuse me, 20,000 by 1120. So this is still part of our 2020, 2020 campaign. And we are far from our goal. So Go ahead and let those donations roll in. You can do it right here on Facebook, right below. Just click the link, make a donation there. You can make a one-time donation or a recurring donation. You can donate through the Facebook, through our website. Uh, you can donate at www.blakfacts.org. There's a donation page with links on there. You can donate there. You can also donate by just um, going to Amazon and Going to, actually, what you want to do is Google Amazon Smile and sign up with us as a beneficiary. So on many of your purchases that you purchase through Amazon, we will get a very small percentage, just one half a percent. But half a percent of something is better than a uh, hundred percent of nothing. So please go ahead and do those things. The, the last one I just gave you cost you no money at all. So if you don't have any money except what you need for your food and your goods, etc. Just go ahead and sign up for Amazon Smiley because it won't cost you anything more than what you're already paying. Because you're asking, you're telling Amazon where to donate their money. So go ahead and send some our way. And we appreciate everything everybody's doing for us so far. Keep on watching because we've got a lot more to come. We've only just begun. Peace out without a doubt. We will see you next time with a brand new rhyme. There we go. All right. And we see you over.